gosh. Okay, everybody, uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to take you through what's called the nitrate test. Again, my name is Stu Hannum. I'm a teacher naturalist at River Edge Nature Center. You can see we've got our pond behind us, and that's the body of water that I'm going to be testing here. Um, the nitrate test is really a very simple test. It's a very quick, easy one to do. Um, there's a couple of precautions you got to be a little bit careful about with this test. This is one of those things where you might want to make sure and wear gloves. It's probably a good idea to do that. Um, and, and also some eye protection as you're doing it. Um, first of all, understand what nitrates and where nitrates are going to come from. The air you breathe is the majority of the air you breathe, over 70% is of course nitrogen N2. So that's one source of nitrogen that you can get in. It's a common thing that we have in our air. You've all seen after good rainstorms, especially an electrical storm, uh, nitrogen will come out of the air into the grass and the grass greens up. Gre grass loves nitrogen. Another one is NH3, that's ammonia. That's one of the materials that we see um, in waste products, especially urine, okay, human waste. And then another one here is the nitrates or nitrites. You can have NO3, NO2, you can have different materials there and that's another type of a waste that you can get. All of these things, plants love them. So I don't care what kind of plant you are, if you're an algae, if you are grass, if you are a tree, they love nitrates. If you, if you have your, your parents are fertilizing your lawns, primarily what they're putting on their lawn is nitrates. Golf courses, this is what they're doing to get things nice and green to grow fast. So no doubt about it, plants love this stuff. So we want to try to keep that out of the water because we don't want excessive amounts of, uh, of plants growing in the water. Speaking of excessive amounts, if you look here, you can see this pond is becoming overgrown. And if you look down right in front of you here, you can see this duckweed that's growing there. Um, it's just taking advantage of the fact that there's a lot of nitrates in the water and it can just grow and get its nutrients right out of the water. So it's doing quite well. Um, this pond, not that this pond is necessarily bad or anything, but that's just a great example of how much plants love nitrates. Now, so we know we're going to get nitrates in water. There is no doubt about it. Here's what we don't want to do. Um, there's something called cultural um, uh, cultural eutrophication where we are adding our own waste, human wastes. We don't want to be the people that are adding that material to it and that's easy to do. Um, when you flush your toilet, um, the urine and the feces that go down the toilet have to be treated before they go back to our water systems. So we do the best we can of removing human waste knowing that we're never going to get it all out of there. That there's always going to be some that's going to go in and we want to minimize the amount of nitrates that we have in there. Um, if we get excessive amounts of nitrates in a river or something, this stuff will show up in here. You'll end up uh, uh, having lots and lots of plant growth. Okay, let's take a quick look at the kit that you're going to use here. In the kit, um, it's really very simple. Again, it's a lot like the pH test kit in that you've got two vials, okay, that you're going to be working with, okay. You've got a black box. This time when you open up the black box, okay, you'll notice that it's got a color of a range of red. Okay, that's the color that you're going to see, and that's what we're going to measure at. We've got two sets of chemicals. There's what's called um, Nitrover 6, and there's another one that's called Nitrover 3. Don't confuse the two. If you switch them in the order you do it, the test simply will not work. Okay, so you got to get them going in the correct order. All right, the way I always do a test like this is really very simple. You've got two test tubes in front of you. So I'm going to go down to the pond here, and I'm going to get myself a sample of water. Okay, I fill it up to the top. Now I pour my water in here until I get it up to the five milliliter mark. That's the white line at the bottom right there. Okay, I'm all set, ready to go. I go to my black box. Notice the water's got a little bit of a yellowish color to it. So I'm gonna place that in the right, excuse me, the left side right over here. And then that'll give some background color to this. Uh, that'll cancel out when I put my other sample on the other side. So I set that there. You can put one of these little rubber stoppers on the top. You're all good. This is the sample then that we're going to test right here. Remember, you read the bottom of the meniscus. You want about five milliliters in there. It's really, 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 really very simple now at this point. All I'm going to do is I'm going to go into here and um, I'm going to take this little aluminum pouch. And what I'm going to do with this aluminum pouch is I'm going to give it one of these, 
because the stuff has a tendency to stick and not want to come out otherwise. Then it's got a small perforation in it and if you have fingernails and things like that it's really pretty easy to tear. For me, a little tougher to do. We open that up. Now remember people, that's garbage. Okay, My students always bothered me that it would end up down by the river where we were testing and then it would end up to be pollution. It doesn't make any sense that we're polluting the source that we're trying to study. I never, that's just always bothered me. So put it in your pocket or something so that you don't lose it. You open up your pouch like this, okay, and you very carefully pour this chemical into here, okay? Now, unfortunately, this chemical is gonna produce a toxic waste called cadmium. So your teachers gotta make sure that they do a good job of disposing of this liquid correctly. So there's our sample. Again, that's going in our pocket, okay, so that we don't end up with garbage. All right, now, we take the stopper, and we put this on top, and we shake for, for three minutes. So now we sit here, and we shake, 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 shake for three minutes. And we shake, shake, shake for three. And so what I usually did was I would tell my students a story during this time while I was doing it for three minutes, just to show them what would happen. We unfortunately, I, I always told them an, an interesting story that happened. We always did ours right by a bridge in Grafton. I was a teacher at Grafton. And we did it right by a bridge then went over. And my students would sit here and they would shake this stuff and shake this. And unfortunately, one time the police stopped us. And these police came and they said, we got a problem here, uh, coach. He said, uh, uh, we just had some people drive by here. And they said that your students were making obscene gestures at us. Um, we were shaking tubes, so that's what we were doing. That's a true story, um, and it was just we were misunderstood, okay, when we did that. All right, so now we've got our sample here. We've shaken it. I've killed three minutes. Now we take that sample and we set it down, and now we go to the Nitroverth 3. When we go to the Nitroverth 3, again, it's just a little packet like this. You give it one of these so that you get that stuff nice and loose inside of there. So shake it up good in there when you do it. And then look, there's a little tear line. Rip this across tear line, put this in your pocket or somewhere so it doesn't end up being garbage. Take the top off, dump your chemical in, shake for 30 seconds. Shake, 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 shake. We used to sing that song, Shake Your Booty, okay? But you guys don't have to do that, okay? So you go shake, shake, shake like this for 30 seconds. Now, I'm gonna tell you something honestly right here. Nitrates are so loved by plants. In my career as a teacher, the only thing I ever saw with this teacher, with this, with this material, and I taught this course for over 20 years, um, when we did this test here, we never got a color change, ever. It would turn sometimes a little bit of a yellowish color, but we never got a color change. If you get no color change, done, zero. You don't need to read anything. It's just as simple as that. So in other words, there'd be nothing in here to compare this to. You turn your little window, you can see you've got your color, but we just simply don't have that. I will tell you this, organisms, natural organisms, plants, algae, trees, things like that, they just gobble up nitrates. If this were to turn a pink on you, I would be very nervous. I used to do this test always uh, as a demonstration for my students from fish tanks that we had. Our fish tanks would always turn pink because the fish were sitting in there peeing and we didn't have enough plants for them to gobble up all the, uh, the ammonia, nitrates and things like that in the water and so we would get a pink color. In the Milwaukee River, we never did and you can see on this pond right here, I did not either. These plants would never allow that nitrates to get away. Okay. Now, again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with this, but you can go back then to your chart here. We almost always got a zero, which was 100%, which was a, a grade of 100 on this test for a Q value. Remember, we're taking a quantitative value and we're turning it into a Q value of 100. Um, our river always performed a perfect score on the nitrate test. Okay, so that's the test, fairly simple, straightforward. Um, you guys have good luck with it.